so as you can see lovely to introduce you to Richard if you haven't met him if you have you already know Richard is the director of fun and the president of Atlantic Tours taking us on an amazing tour today Richard over to you thank you Charlie and thank you Candace. And as you can see, I am fun. I, I can play this uh, game as well. Atlantic Tours has been in business for over 50 years, and uh, we specialize in Atlantic Canada. That's the four most easterly provinces of Canada, and the most easterly being Newfoundland and Labrador. And I've traveled a lot of the world, and some of you have met me at Carabri a couple times, and I love my travels, but one of my favorite places on the planet is Newfoundland and Labrador. And I often compare it to Alaska. For Americans, I say it's the Alaska of the East. We don't have the glaciers, but we have these majestic icebergs that I even like more. We have the moose and the caribou. We don't have grizzly bears, but we have black bears and, and many other wildlife. And Atlantic Tours, one of our touring programs is our 13 day program that we offer uh, beginning in Halifax, because that is the, um, the most frequent gateway airwise into the region. And then we end our trip in St. John's, Newfoundland. So the big province of Newfoundland and Labrador, we do in one swipe. You don't have to come back to Halifax at the end. You can if you want. And we can also combine this trip with a tour of the Maritimes, making it a 23 day trip. So our first uh, day in Halifax is an arrival day. Uh, anytime that day or evening is fine. We do have a reception a little later in the evening for everyone to meet one another. Um, and uh, then uh, the talk about the next morning, which is a free morning in Halifax prior to departing right after lunch. And we head up to beautiful Cape Breton Islands en route to the ferry that we're going to take to Newfoundland and Labrador. And we'll be traveling by motor coach. And this is an example of one of our motor coaches. This is a wrapped one with the beautiful puffins on the uh, side there that you're seeing. No, they're not that size, but we like to you know, show them uh, very well on our motor coach. Uh, we'll stop in Sydney for a nice dinner together, and then we'll get on board the ferry uh, with full cabins, uh, washroom equipped, which will take us on an overnight crossing to Newfoundland and Labrador. When we arrive in Newfoundland, uh, we'll come to the community of Port of Basque, where we'll get off and we'll have breakfast, uh, get our land legs, and then we'll start heading up the Great Northern Peninsula. We'll travel through the Codroy Valley into the community of Cornerbrook. Uh, this is a fall view of Cornerbrook, but beautiful views here, looking up uh, at the, the west coast of Newfoundland, the mountains that you're going to be traveling. And uh, this is our uh, lunch uh, area in the Rocky Harbor area. And you're getting to see some of what you're going to see as far as landscape. There's not a lot of trees that are gonna obstruct your view. So on our left side, traveling up the coast, you're gonna have beautiful water views and on our right, the fjords and mountains. And uh, hopefully along our way, we're gonna come in contact with some moose. And, and as uh, Candace said, there's a, a healthy population of moose in Grossmore National Park. So we will have been traveling through that and up the Northern Peninsula uh, and uh, over 120,000 moose. So you got nearly a quarter of the population of Newfoundland <laughs> um, in moose alone. So it's, uh, it's a popular, uh, uh, item that you don't, uh, we always say traveling by motor coach is a great way. You're looking up over any trees that you may see. So great views uh, for wildlife. Our first overnight in Newfoundland is going to be in the community of port the northern shrimp capital of the world. Those are the succulent little matin shrimp. Um, and uh, they're very um, small uh, salad shrimp. But it's a good chance to try them here. We're going to do the National Historic Site in port And once again, a good view of the views on our travels. Uh, one of the things I like about um, uh, the National Historic Site is the lighthouse on the on the grounds as well. And this is a great uh, hangout for moose. They seem to know that they're protected in that area. So often we'll see them just out grazing when we're there. And the National Historic uh, Site pays tribute to the archaic Indians. Uh, and there's digs ongoing there. So you get to learn lots about um, the early uh, settlers, the first settlers uh, here in uh, Newfoundland. Um, the next morning, we're going to go over to the big land, over to Labrador, and uh, do a day of touring. And we're going to travel up to our first UNESCO World Heritage Site on this trip, which is Red Bay National Historic Site. And in the 1600s, this was a Basque whaling center that harvested oil, as Candace mentioned, which supplied much of Europe. And that's uh, before the oil we know today was king. So this was one of the first industrialized sites in North America. Just a beautiful little community. 
Um, and uh, in the afternoon, we're going to travel back for overnight. But this is the um, uh, some of the displays in the museum itself. Uh, after overnight, the next morning, we're going to back on the ferry. The ferry is uh, less than a two hour drive, and we're going to continue up the Great Northern Peninsula, uh, where we're going to uh, go to Lancel Meadows, our second UNESCO World Heritage Site, which uh, talks about uh, the uh, Vikings when they came to this area. And, um, and the uh, site uh, does a wonderful uh, presentation. There's live animation. You'll get to see the mounds. And once again, you're all along Iceberg Alley here. So often there's majestic icebergs right off the coast. When icebergs uh, lodge themselves in some of the bays, they're there until they melt. And remember that 90% of the iceberg is below the water. So they change their view and look daily as they melt. Uh, here's some Vikings. And of course, this is one of my uh, favorite uh, commercials that Newfoundland and Labrador has on their website. They have award-winning commercials and just uh, are breathtaking. This was one with kind of the door swings open and the little fellow's scared. So it's, uh, it's an excellent uh, uh, opportunity if you go on to the Newfoundland and Labrador website to look at their great award-winning videos. Uh, on our way back to our overnight, which will be in St. Anthony, we stop at the Dark Tickle. That's at the Cono Museum where you learn about some of the nice delicacies, jam and jelly-wise. Uh, that we uh, make in Newfoundland and Labrador, like baked apple and partridge berry, and uh, they have their Newfoundland uh, dogs, so you'll be able to uh, visit with them as well, which is always a big hit. Um, when we get to St. Anthony, uh, you'll go up and be able to look out over Iceberg Alley uh, from the lighthouse. Um, and hopefully see some icebergs right in the harbor, but we're going to go out on a boat tour uh, the following morning uh, in Iceberg Alley, where you'll get to have iceberg water in your drink and uh, just a really wonderful experience for whales and uh, seabirds. And here's some of the whales that you might see, um, another visual of icebergs. And then we're going to visit the Grenville Historic Properties and uh, learn about Sir Wilfred Grenville, who was a doctor in the north and all the great work he did along the coastline of, uh, of Newfoundland and Labrador. On our uh, next day, we're going to travel down to Grossmoor National Park, where we're going to spend two nights in the community of Cowhead. Uh, we're going to stop at the Broom Point Fishing Exhibit and learn about the fisheries. But this is the views that you're going to be seeing now traveling down the northern peninsula. Um, our two nights in Cowhead across the street from the hotel is a beautiful uh, theater, a, a brand new theater that just opened during COVID, home of the Grossmorn Theater Festival. Each evening there's a couple of performances, world-class theater in a community of about uh, three or 500 people. And so uh, it's just uh, an amazing show that they put on and we set tickets aside for anyone that might want to attend. Um, while we're in Grossmore, this is uh, Grossmore Mountain, and we're going to do a couple more boat tours here, and one will be an opportunity to visit Western Brook Pond, which is a landlocked fjord. Uh, this, uh, we have a separate bus and a separate guide that'll take you in because it's a 45-minute walk in and a 45-minute walk out. Um, then we will also... Um, have an opportunity to do Bond Bay Fjord. So you can either do Grossmore or you can do Bond Bay. Uh, this, this one, we would arrive in the parking lot, get out, get on the boat and go for a nice uh, uh, touring experience. Bond Bay is not a landlocked fjord, so there's an opportunity for whales here. There's also, you know, eagles and, and other uh, seabirds. Just a stunning uh, opportunity to look at um, uh, Grossmore National Park. We'll visit the Discovery Center so you can see all the exhibits and also visit the Tablelands, as Candace mentioned. This is where you can pick up and hold in your hand a piece of the Earth's mantle or walk on the Earth's mantle. Nothing will ever grow on this mountain. It's just a big rusty rock. Two, two night stays, two nights for the opportunity to do the theater. And uh, the hotel we use is right on the beach in Cowhead, Shallow Bay Motel. The next morning, we're going to do uh, Lobster Cove Lighthouse. The views from here along Rocky Harbor and out across Bond Bay are just stunning. And then we're going to continue on to Gander. And Gander is in the center part. Lots of trees we're going to see today, much larger trees. Uh, lumbering and forestry is very important in central Newfoundland. And the Gander uh, was kind of the crossroads of America during aviation early aviation before flights could go the distance they do today. It was a refueling stop. And you're gonna learn all about Gander's part in the 9-11 uh, uh, when a lot of planes uh, were uh, sent to Canada. 
And uh, the musical Come From Away, which is uh, played in Broadway and is toward the world. You'll learn about our role in, in the 9-11 uh, 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 situation where uh, the planes came to Canada. And uh, then the next day, we're going to go out to the beautiful outport of Twillingate, once again along Iceberg Alley. So uh, again, time to look out over and see majestic icebergs, whales, right from the cliffs and seaside. Beautiful little fishing community. Uh, here's an example of some of the icebergs you might see. Uh, we also do the lighthouse, as I mentioned, which is quite high up and overlooks that, uh, the, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, some more beautiful views. And then we visit the local Twillingate Museum. One of the other stops we do this today is the Prime Birth Fishing Exhibit. We'll learn all about the fisheries from a fisherman. He will fill it a cod, talk about it. It's rated as one of the favorite things on our trip. People love this museum. Uh, you'll see the fishing stages, learn all about that. And then uh, we're going to uh, now continue along the East Coast of Newfoundland through Terra Nova National Park. And Terra Nova National Park will visit the Marine Interpretation Center. Uh, we'll also see, see some of the nice views out over uh, the, uh, the uh, land side. And we'll uh, go out to the next, we're gonna spend two nights in um, Clarenville, Newfoundland. And we're going to do a day of touring on the Bonavista Peninsula. So we're going to go out to the Bonavista Lighthouse. We're going to uh, visit the beautiful community of Bonavista, uh, learn about the Matthew. And uh, we're also going to have lunch in the community at Skipper's Restaurant. And then in the afternoon, we're going to visit um, Historic Trinity, but another beautiful view from Bonavista. And Trinity is a uh, a living museum where you can go in a lot of the buildings here. You'll have some free time to explore. You can see our motor coach in the picture down below. And uh, we're gonna do an afternoon of touring. Uh, just an absolutely stunning uh, community as you can see from this, uh, this picture. Once again, another beautiful uh, picture, the colorful homes, which are famous in Newfoundland and Labrador. We're going to have dinner out in the community at the Erickson premises before returning to Clarendale for our second overnight. The following morning, we're going to head to the capital city of St. John's, but we're also going to visit Brigus on the way. Um, Brigus um, has been made famous here on one of the, um, the uh, TV stations. There's a, a show called Rock Solid Builds, uh, with the carpentry company located in this community. And they do a lot of work on the historic homes and it's just a stunning stop. Uh, once again, a nice view of Brigus. Um, again, uh, another view. And then we're gonna end up in the capital city for two nights in St. John's. The colorful buildings uh, are amazing. The, the jelly bean houses as we call them. And uh, the harbor is a beautiful little narrow harbor, but a big harbor. Uh, the entrance into it is the narrow part. Uh, once again, a view of the jelly bean houses and uh, the narrows of the harbor itself. We're gonna have a city tour while we're there. We're gonna go to the community of Kitty Vitty and Kitty Vitty is where the, um, the, uh, the iceberg um, uh, beer is made. And just once again, there's a little shops there. It's a beautiful spot to visit. We also visit Signal Hill, which is the fortification site on top of uh, the hill overlooking the harbor in the city of St. John's. And uh, then we're going to go down to Gatherall's uh, the, uh, and have a, a third boat tour. This is a whale watching boat tour and also a bird that goes out, uh, uh, a boat that goes out to Whitless Bay, where we're going to uh, be able to see the puffin colony. Uh, as Candace said, the largest puffin colony is located uh, on in Whitless Bay on an island there. So you get an opportunity to see lots of uh, puffins, whales, hopefully, and even icebergs because you're still along Iceberg Alley. So here's a whale. Um, here's one of the boats that they use. Here's those wonderful puffins that everyone smiles at and they like to pose for the camera, it seems. And before uh, get going back to the capital city, uh, we're going to stop at the most easterly point in North America where the sun comes up first, Cape Sphere National Historic Site. Uh, once again, you'll have time to wander and explore. And uh, then you'll come back to St. John's for your final night and make your way home. But as I mentioned earlier, this tour combines nicely with our Atlantic Maritimes tour. 
Our Newfoundland, as I said, is a 13-day tour, and our Maritimes is a 13-day tour. When you combine them and remove the uh, overlap, it turns into 23 days, which uh, many people from down under and other parts of the world come and do our entire region. And um, that was, I know, a speed tour of our region. And um, here you are with my contact information and Candace's and uh, open to any questions that uh, you may have.